we were uh, talking, we were talking about talk, as my Yankee professor used to say. So we were looking at Newton's second law for rotation. And we said, okay, well, it's just the sum of the torques equals something related to mass times angular acceleration. And we said, that can't be mass because we thought about the units and said, oh, this must be a new rotational kind of mass. You could call it rotational mass, but that's a little bit of a weird word. That's just something I made up. That's not like a real word. It's just sort of the, the mass you use, the thing that resists motion uh, when something is turning. It's really called the moment of inertia. So I think we got this far last time. We're at the moment of inertia, I, in kilogram meters squared. So you can immediately see that it has something to do with the mass, but it also has something to do with some position. And what it has to do with is um, I depends on the mass and how it is distributed. Distributed, and here's the per important part, around or about what? An axis of rotation. How is distributed about an axis of rotation. Therefore, if somebody ever says to you, what's the moment of inertia of this? You can say, that's a stupid question. Because you didn't tell me the axis, right? Objects do not have an inherent moment of inertia. They only have an inherent moment of inertia about different axes. This has many moments of inertia. There's this axis, there's this axis. Every object has infinite moments of inertia because it has all these different axes it could possibly be moving around, okay? So you have to define both the object, its mass, its shape, and how it's distributed around um, a specific axis, okay? So to prove that to you, we're going to spin my three disks here. And now that these things are falling apart, we're gonna watch the video of it. But basically, it's three of my favorite scientists, and they all are, this, this is uh, Faraday, Greatest scientist that ever lived, right there, Faraday, Michael Faraday. If you think it's somebody else, you're wrong. It's Michael Faraday. I'll tell you why next semester. Mary Curie, the only person to win Nobel Prize in physics and chemistry. I also like her descendant, Sherry Curie, from uh, The Runaways, but I'm not sure they're related. And then, of course, Carl Sagan. Who has watched the, uh, what's that, Neil deGrasse guy? Have you all seen his Cosmos? Yeah, maybe. Go watch the 1980 Cosmos. It's just, as, actually, it's better. It's really good, Carl Sagan. So what we're gonna do is these, uh, little known fact, all these scientists had the same mass. They all weighed the same. They all clocked in at about, you know, one, whatever, something. But here we're gonna spin them, and we're gonna see that uh, they spin at different rates. Let's see, I already have it up somewhere here. La, there it is. We're gonna watch them spin. So. What we've got here is all three scientists on a disk, and we have a string around the disk, and we have the same weight on each one, the same mass. I think it was 100 grams or something. So in terms of torque, they all are the same because they have the same radius, R, and we've calculated torque a lot. We have the tension here, right? So then the torque would be the angle's 90 degrees. We're not going to do it in detail, is the radius of the disk times the tension, which isn't quite mg because it's accelerating and we don't want to do the kinematics right now. But the point is they all have the same torque, okay? So we're going to play and watch and we remove the rod and see what happens. So here we go, pull the rod and, oh, look at Faraday go. Sagan with all the gravitas goes the slowest, but they all have the same mass. How is that possible? How is it possible? And the answer is you look at the back. And of course the answer is they have different moments because their mass is distributed differently, right? So here is Faraday. All of his mass is near the center. Oh, we don't want to watch this idiot talk here. Let's turn, Let's turn that off here. So all of uh, his mass is near the center. And uh, if we then, the next fastest person was, um, yeah, the next fastest was who? Was Curie. Next fastest was Curie, and that's because her mass is a little bit further out, and then the slowest was Sagan because his mass is really far out. Right? So they have the same mass, it's just farther and farther from the axis. So that would mean that if you get farther and farther from the axis, this must get bigger because this is getting smaller. Right? They have the same torque, more 
uh, moment means less angular acceleration. All right. This is confusing, and there, here's the reason. Okay, the reason has to do with these two things here. All right. So we often have good intuition for translational kinematics and bad intuition for rotational kinematics. And the reason is, you know, we evolved hunting prey, right? So the thing's running there, and you throw a rock at it, and you get to eat it. Very little prey, like, spins around in a circle, okay? So there's proof, like, look at these, you know, football players. This guy is over here, throws a ball 60 yards in a trajectory. Another guy is running in a different frame of reference, jumps from his frame of reference into his own trajectory, in his own frame of reference, and it makes it land in his hand. That's a pretty good intuition for translational kinematics, isn't it? I am trying so hard to be a normal person. It's like, I just, I, I really try. And I was going to join the dad's club at my kid's school. It's like, I'm going to be a normal dad. And the very first event is they went to the Houston Gun Club to shoot trap and skeet. And I was like, well, you know, I'm from the country. I have shot trap and skeet before, but not usually with people. I don't know their mental stability. You know, I don't really like to <laughs> handle live shotguns with people like that. So I didn't join it and I feel horrible. But it's because you're good at translational kinematics is why people are good at trap and skeet. Let's think about how good people are at rotational motion, right? All you got to do is spin the stupid thing and make it land like right here. How hard is that? You say, well, you don't know how slow the wheel slows down. Well, you do it like 20 times during the show. And by the end of the show, they're no better. None of us could sit here with this wheel and spin it and say, oh, I'm going to make it land here. Right? It's totally random. It's because we're no good at circular motion. We're good at translational motion. So what we're trying to do here is like build up your intuition for circular motion. And this is the first thing, is that the rotational mass um, depends on how the mass is distributed. Uh, so of course, we'd like to build up your intuition, but more useful is we're just going to tell you how to calculate it. That's actually where you're going to get your grade from. Although intuition might help a little bit. Let's see. 